Welcome to the Venus and Mars show, and we are so happy to have you here with us tonight. I'm Peter, or Mars. And I'm Anne, Venus. Tonight we have author William Taro as a guest. Anne? I'm very excited about this, but I get a little bit nervous, I'm going to be honest. He's writing about some uh, political corruption and... It's all true. Yeah, well, we've been down this road before, and this is territory that, unfortunately, in some ways, you're all too familiar with. Yeah, and, and having some ties to Somerville also, no, I, yeah, so this right. is pretty interesting to me. Yeah. It happens a lot more than people know. Yeah, well, I think uh, you may be surprised what you're going to hear about some of the things that Bill's going to share with us. Stay tuned. So everyone, we have Bill, I'm sorry, William Toro <laughs> joining us today. Thank you for coming. Thank yes. you for inviting Thanks me. Thanks for coming on our show, Bill. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank now, what do you have to tell us? <laughs> well, whatever you want to know, shoot. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning here. So I know that you're an author. Yes. You're writing a book now, but you've written one before. These are sequels. I, I've written Stealing Some of Old Death of an Urban City. Okay. It's about corruption in the city of Somerville and how seven-term Mayor Joe Credatoni has been getting away with criminal activity right under everybody's noses for the past 14 years. So what years. time frame? Or the last 14 years, you're saying? The so past 14 years. He's got a, been in office since 2004, correct, yes. So it's covering from 2004 to the present. To current yeah. date, yes. He's like, he's like bullets bouncing off of him, nothing sticks until now. <laughs> well, let's, let's go back and bring everybody at home up to speed. So we have you writing for... Somerville News yeah, also. I'm a publisher of the Somerville News Weekly in Boston News Group. A publisher, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. yeah, and that gives all the details. Yes, uh, I write articles every week regarding the true stories of, you know, everything that goes on in Somerville. Um, nothing watered down. As, as I was saying earlier, I went to a, a news summit this past week in Somerville where people were getting together with news agencies, what they'd like to have talked about, you know, in the news. And I've heard people, they have sitting there listening. <laughs> I heard someone say, I want to talk about dogs, I want to talk about cats, I want to talk about up paving, where you take the <laughs> pavement out, put green space in. I even heard someone saying, we want you to cover more about how Uber drivers are getting more money during peak time. This is big yawn time. So it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I wanted to throw up in my mouth. That's yeah, how tired I, mean, I was. I, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, that's not the fast lane. I'm definitely the but fast I lane. Know, so when it become made by RFD? I, and I, I, you know, and I says, why? I mean, you got so much corruption going on in the city of Somerville. The mayor's shaking down property owners. He's taking <laughs> buildings and property, eminent domain from people. Um, it, it's just everything going on, and people are just more concerned about trees and, and whatnot. It, well, they obviously haven't been on the other side of that. They have been on it, and it's the excitement. In, in Somerville, you got the people who are being affected by all this stuff, and then you got the people who are getting free stuff. It's like you ever hear of fluff another? Yeah. Fluff and I when we were a kid. Yeah, no, it's still that, around. Yeah, it's still it. around. It was invented in some of them 100 years ago. So Joe Curtitone, every year, has a fluff fest. That fluff fest, <laughs> believe it or not. I love that. 20,000 people showed up. You've got to love the guy. 20,000 people showed up to it this past 20, October. 20,000. 20,000. Those are his votes right there. <laughs> Never mind the... Do they get free fluff and utter? They get free fluff and utter. They white mouths. <laughs> and he, he also has a misery festival. Misery. We, we're... He expects people to go there with sad faces on. They carry phony caskets, clown frown faces, sad looks, and everything. It's a it's it's a it's a, a sad time. So what does that represent? It's it's one of the festivals he throws, and he gets probably ten thousand people going to it. I, it I'm it's, not it's really sure I understand that. I, I don't understand the logic behind it, but yeah. it, you have to go there in a bad, sad. Mood. Well, does it remain sad, or does the end till, turn till, till the end of the event and it's over? Oh. But he gets people in for that. Wow, that's a lot of people it. to be sad at one yeah. time. But these are the people who are all blindsided to seeing the real corruption. I know be sad if I want. I don't need enough. Yeah, <laughs> really, you know. <laughs> Unbelievable. We can watch those shows, like about the trees and the dogs. The trees and, and the dogs if they want and the cats. How much you were driving last week? <laughs> so but, let's get to the book. Can yeah. you just show sure. the book at home? It's still in Somerville, Death of an Urban City. And it describes 566 pages of the truth. Nothing watered down of all corruption has happened. And believe me, it's not just happening in Somerville. It's happening everywhere. you got to dig for it. It's happening more in Somerville. I'm Sometimes you don't have to dig for well, it. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I understand that. But in Somerville, I, I, I've seen what Joe does. I know what he's doing. 
It's all in this book. So is it's this all, all coming from your eyes? Is this your facts? First hand witnessing it all, correct. Oh my goodness. And I, and I, ha I have um, witnesses themselves coming forward. We use real names, uh -huh. nothing fictional. I, 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 I'm, I haven't been sued. Uh, I, I've done two articles inviting people, hey, sue me for slander. If I've ever written about you any time, sue me for slander. Because yeah. I guarantee I'll have you on the witness stand with your hands on the Bible with the FBI in the front row. And no one's come forward. Now, okay. th there's stuff that you've got in this book, I'm sure, that is a little bit risky for you, isn't it not? Yeah, uh, I could say so. Yes, um, I had my first debt threat in, in January yeah. by one of um, uh, Mir Curtone's uh, department heads. And, you know, but he has the FBI in his pocket, so where I'm a federal witness with all of this, it all got washed away. Um, Mir Curtone has his own FBI people over there where he has a, a Somerville police officer for the past 14 years has been on loan to the FBI. But before all of this book and all of this came out, you two were very good friends. We were the best of friends. I had a limo company, he was my driver. I helped put him through college. Um, we hung around together. He was also, when he graduated college, he became an attorney. Him and his sister, the Register of Deeds, Maria Cardatoni, someone else who's in this book, oh. with, with uh, pretty dirty deeds in here. They were both my uh, divorce attorneys in my prior marriage. They're lawyers, too? They're lawyers, too. We were friends, and it just, you know, it, it just it was heartbreaking to see that, you know, he tried to extort my family like he does so to So that was else. the breaking point. Yes, it was. Now, has he made any comments to you directly about betraying him or anything like that? He's never even said a word to me since I've been writing about him. Nothing at all. And he's never publicly denied it, refuted it, press release, press conference, nothing. Huh. Right. So I what's, what's that tell you right there? I don't know. I know. He doesn't want to bring more, any more attention to it than he has. No to. attention yeah. at all. Yeah. And, and it's gonna, whatever he says, that even, whatever questions I ask him about it, it'll incriminate him. So he's not going to ask me anything. Yeah. They're all absolutely 100%. Now, you're true. able to go from writing a book to writing a sequel now. Yes. Right. The, the sequel is um, Stealing Somerville Two: How Corrupt Somerville Politics Place Sean Collier, Slain MIT Police Officer Sean Collier's Destiny in the him. Path of the Boston Marathon Bombers. Uh, Sean Collier was on a police municipal hiring list in Somerville. There were 50 candidates on the list, from 1 to 50, beginning with uh, a, a retired Naval Air Force, a retired Air Force officer. Joe Curtatoni had a problem with her mother. Number 15 on the list, Joe Curtatoni had a problem with his father. Number 15 on the list, Joe Curtatoni had a problem with his father, too. Sean Cully was probably number 13 or 14 on that list. Unfortunately, Joe bumped from 1 to 50. He bumped the whole list, bringing number 51 on the next list to be first on so the list. So he just got caught it. in that net and pulled. He got pulled right out. Because of that, Sean Cully never made it as a police officer. <laughs> and like I was telling you earlier, I got a call two months ago. A gentleman called me. He goes, Bill, he says, my son had me call you. How did he find you? He's been following my stories for the past few years. He said, my son had me call you. If he hadn't become a son of a police officer when he was supposed to be, he'd be alive today, instead of making him a police officer when he was six feet under. Uh. And, I, and I says, what's your last name? He goes, Collier. It was Sean Collier's father. So right now I'm working with him to uncover the truth, yeah. and we're exposing everything Curtis Tony has done to put this kid Is that coming out was. in the next book? It, it's coming out uh, in this uh, spring of 2019, yes. How long, far along are you on that one? I'm on page 490. So we're I, close. I'm, yeah. No, we're not, we're not close yet. I'm That's still 500 and something. Five, I'm waiting for the last chapter when the cuffs go on. <laughs> That's the last chapter. But That's you can actually make party. another sequel out of that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be Life Behind Bars for Curtis Tony. That's what oh, it's going to be. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, and you think that that's going to happen? I really think so. Now the FBI in are on it. Yes, the FBI are on the case, and Andrew Lillen, the uh, U.S. attorney, he's handling it personally, especially on the Sean Collier case. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. You can't. Now, have you always been a writer or a publisher? Is that what you did? I, I started doing it about 15 years ago. I just, you know, like I said, one day I was walking around Somerville. And you, you could trip on news. And, it's, <laughs> and, and you walk through, you don't read none of it in the papers over there. No one wants to report nothing. There's corruption going on. There's buildings and houses taken by eminent domain, mm -hmm. taken by the mayor, given to his friends who are developers. It, he's paying the, the property owners a minimal price, and he's getting 20 times the price through the developers. He's a silent partner with them. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's, it's a sad, it's sad rife, situation. It's rife with corruption. It, it, it's horrible. Yeah. It, it, like, it, it's happening everywhere. Oh, yeah. Not just happened at Summerall. But he continues to get voted in. So. Well, what he does, um, he there's the people who know what's going on, they're the victims, and are following my stories and understand what's going on. Then you got the people who are getting free things, meaning, have you ever heard of Fluff and Other? Yeah. When you were a kid, Fluff oh, and Other. Yeah. yeah. Fluff and Other, believe it or not, was invented in some of 100 years ago. Right. Joe Curtoni every year has a fluff vest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where everyone's dressed in fluff and other outfits. They're dressed in, uh, they're wearing fluff and other hats, and they're eating fluff and other. And they get their free fluff and other when they show guess up? Guess how many people showed up in October? I've take, just take a rough guess. 10? 20,000 people. 20,000? 20, 20,000 people showed up for a fluff fest. For a fluff fest on a Sunday. <laughs> Those are his votes right there. All you need is 5,000 to win. Maybe there's fluff. a lot of hungry Can we go people? to the next fluff oh, no. fest? <laughs> it's unbe- and he also has something called, it's a misery festival. Misery? Where you have to Who go loves, there. Misery loves company? Well, the, I didn't understand it either until I went to one of them. There are people there with frowns on their faces, dressed as unhappy clowns. Oh. They're carrying phony caskets around, they're, they're dressed as zombies, and I'm saying... Is there a point to that? If it is, I, I, I haven't you seen have it yet, seen? but he attracts 10, 15,000 people to no. it. No. He gets them to go. It's, it's a gimmick, and he's getting them to go. <laughs> and he's, you know, you're getting stuff like that that's overshadowing truth like this. Yeah. yeah. And, and Distract them with funny stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. They forget it's even it's going on. Laugh. <laughs> with fluff. With yeah, fluff. Fluff's good. Yeah. You mix it with peanut butter, it's even better. <laughs> I'll never look at fluff another <laughs> Think of Joe Caratoni when you eat it, though. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but also looking at fluff, like not the real stories, but the fluff. It, well, instead. it's all fluff. The attraction. Other yeah. newspapers and other uh, radio stations, they like to sugarcoat things with Joe Caratoni. I give it all. I, there's nothing watered down on my articles. It's SomervilleNewsWeekly.com. You can go check it out, and you can check out my <laughs> books, uh, Somerville Steel and Somerville Death of Arab City. It's 566 pages of the absolute truth. Wow. And it's available on Barnes & Noble, no Amazon. No bull of any kind? No, no. bull at all. Nothing. <laughs> and how can they get it? You can go on StealingSomerville.com. Okay. Or you can go on Barnes & Noble or Amazon.com. And like I said, StealingSomerville.com. And... The books are there waiting for you. Do you yeah. do any book signings anywhere? I haven't yet, but I've done like five TV shows already on it. Yeah. I recently was on a Steven Siegel show. It's nationwide. Yeah. And uh, wow. he, he, um, he, he grabbed quite a bit of pretty large audience that, you know, found out about it. And it made, made you know, aware what's going on in our city. Yeah. And it's given, making people look deeper into what they have to do into their cities. Yeah. Some of them are just lucky that I'm looking into theirs. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're lucky I don't move to well, another city you said, now. you'll have to walk a few feet before stumbling <laughs> over And especially right now, we got Donald Trump in office and, you know, some of them are sanctuary city and everyone's against Donald Trump. Well, let's see the pictures. Yeah, i got to show you the picture. Of said Donald Trump. That yeah. 2016. I have bragging rights to this. <laughs> I was the first and only newspaper in the country wow. to formally endorse Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. Um, my brother Walter and State Representative Al Balzaro, they helped to organize a house party in, in New Hampshire. They invited me. I got to meet the Don, fell in love with the guy, yeah. <laughs> he endorsed him, and then what do you know? He endorsed the Summerville News Weekly, my paper. What would the New York Times or the Washington Post pay for that picture right there? Even the Boston Globe, what would they pay? Oh, it's amazing. Oh, cool. And, yeah. Uh, and he, they give a lot of fluff. And he, and for he that. didn't forget where he came from. He, you know, he sent 14 tickets over for the inauguration. Oh. My family, my staff, we attended it. You did. I, I've met him about 11 times. Uh huh. The first family, nice people, very nice people. Right. Yeah. That's quite. What you read about in the papers is all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but mine's the truth. Maybe we get Dawn on our show sometime. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> so your other book, the sequel, is going to be out when? Uh, you're talking about spring 2019. Like I said, I'm just waiting for the final chapter. The book's all ready. Yeah. Just waiting for the, 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 that ch- the clicking noise of them shiny chrome bracelets to go on Mick Carter Tony's hands. Yeah. The, um, do you find that most of these corruption stories come out of Boston? Why is that? It's like a magnet, you know, I, between no, how we, it's nest. Yeah, hornets, <laughs> you know, you got Howie Winter, Whitey Bulger, Joe Curtatoni, Maria Curtatoni. It's just that, you know, we, we, the funny thing with Maria Curtatoni, she's the Register of Deeds. She finds a property, gets it to Joe Curtatoni, oh his developers 
hovering over their owners, they take it in a domain, then he gets to develop it. He sells it at a profit. What a better, better relationship with that. Called yeah. a racket. Wow. It's a racket. Yeah. There's an investigation going on right now in investigating Maria Curtoni and Joe Curtoni and fi other family members who are involved in manipulation of these properties and tying them up and selling them. Wow. So we're, we're, I'm really a, excited it's, to it's see how this a, turns yeah. out. Do you really think it will happen in 2019? You'll have the end of that book? I'm hoping to get it within the next month and a half. Well, people right. at home better keep their eye I'm on open. this story. I'm a, they're going to be a collector's item once the cuffs go on, so get them. All right. Well, we need a signed copy for I, I brought them for you. Thank yeah. you. And thank, thank you so much for being here Thank you so much for the invitation. Yes. Thank you I, so uh, much. So glad that you came because I didn't even, I'm really, you know, I grew up in Braintree, 10 miles away from some of the, never knew it was all this crap was going no on. No one knows. No, I mean through the, I mean, I know of the high profile names, but I'm talking about the everyday occurrences. Yeah, you know, on. like I said, it's happening everywhere, but. Not in Bridgewater. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. like, you, you're going you're gonna to get someone to want really to Weymouth, dig into the stuff. You dig into it, you'll find it. Yeah. It, it, believe it or not, it's there. Especially Weymouth, man. No, there's nothing. Going on, <laughs> Weymouth clean? Very clean. Okay, I won't Squeaky. write a book in that neighborhood. Thank, thank you. you for thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so, so much. Thank you so Bill. much. Thank you. Wow. What do you think about that, Ann? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I, mean, I give him a lot of credit, a lot of guts there to be going yeah, well, after a mayor of a city and someone who was his best friend. I know. Well, there's 500 and what, 66 pages, uh, and everything's true. But he's uh, not I done yet. Then no, no, I know other... that. But I wonder what's in all that 566 pages. It's not just Jack is a good boy, Jack is a good boy, well, Jack is a good boy. I don't, I don't know about <laughs> you people at home, but I yeah. know I'm sitting at the edge of my seat wondering, yeah. when is the end of the book? How is well, it going to be written now? I look, he gave me a, a, gave us signed copies. I look forward to reading it. and. Uh, can't wait for, for book number two. Same, same. Okay, well, that wraps up our show tonight. Thank you for coming on. I'm Peter. And I'm Ann. Thank you for watching. Good night.